Tim with Morial TV and uh, Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash live via Skype. Jacob, uh, one of the believers had a question based on 2 Corinthians 5.21. How could Jesus be made sin when he himself was sinless? He had no sin. Had he had sin, he would not have been in a position to take ours and be our atonement. To God, one man without sin is worth more than all men with sin. <coughs> this is represented symbolically by the fact that the Paschal Lamb had to be without spot or blemish. So he who knew no sin became sin. He simply took not our sin per se in the sense of he committed it. We're the ones who committed the sin, but he took the culpability for it as if he were personally responsible for it. We can, by analogy, explain this in certain respects. If a minor, a child, commits a serious crime, causing serious property liability, and there's significant damage to property, the court can order the parents of the child to pay the damages, even though the parents themselves did not perpetrate the act of vandalism, the child did, the parents assume the financial responsibility to make restitution to the owners of the damaged property. They didn't do anything wrong. Perhaps they were controlling that child to the best of their ability. Perhaps it was something he did when he was on his way, <coughs> or she was on her way to or from school. But the parents, although they did not do it, assumed the responsibility for the child. Well, Jesus assumed responsibility for us for what we did in the same way. However, the qualifier is he never did anything wrong himself. Dear friends, greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Fash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, a questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print for the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kendall and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kendall. Kendall. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. First being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. 
So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Her Paints Off, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.